the best Optifine settings. In this video, we're going to go over a settings mix. You're not going to have the best graphics Minecraft can possibly give you, but you're also not going to have the worst. And the goal is to make Minecraft as playable as possible while still looking good. So let's go ahead and dive on into it. Now we're going to be starting off here in the Minecraft launcher. We do obviously already have Optifine installed. If you do want to see how to install Optifine, there's a link in the description down below on how to get it and get it installed, but then come back to this video. Now the reason we're starting in the Minecraft launcher is I would recommend adding a little more RAM to Minecraft. So go ahead and click on installations up here at the top. Make sure modded is selected over here under versions and then find Optifine. Hover over it, click the three dots and click edit. Now what we want to do is finally click more options here and scroll down. This first line, if you will, our first set of text is XMX 2G. That means two gigabytes of RAM is dedicated to Minecraft. I would recommend upping this to four gigabytes, assuming you have at least eight gigabytes of RAM on your PC. If you have less than that, well then obviously you probably shouldn't update this, but four gigabytes of RAM gives Minecraft vanilla with Optifine plenty of room and allows you to do uh, some decent graphics increases if you can add the more RAM to it. Let's go ahead and click save there, and now we can launch up Minecraft with Optifine. While this is happening, have a notice from our company, Simple Game Hosting. Go to the first link in the description down below, the breakdown.xyz slash sgh, to start your very own Minecraft server. At Simple Game Hosting, we have one-click installation of mod packs, super easy to add plugins, mods, server customization, and if you need any help along the way, we have a high-quality knowledge base and live chat support. On top of all that, we've got high-quality hardware and an amazing custom-built panel, so go check out Simple Game Hosting at the first link in the description down below, the breakdown.xyz slash sgh to start your very own Minecraft server. Now, if we go ahead and move in game here, I do want to start off by mentioning resource packs. The reason being is that resource packs probably shouldn't be installed if you want the best performance possible. There are some that claim to give more performance to Minecraft, but I've tested those and I've never really seen them actually give better performance. So with that, if you want the best performance, go ahead and remove a resource pack. But truthfully, we're going to set this up so you can actually have a resource pack and use some of the awesome features that Aptifine adds in for resource packs. But just keep in mind if you are getting lag, maybe try uninstalling your resource pack after this and, and seeing if it fixes it. Now let's just go ahead and go to video settings and start going through everything. For our graphics, we're gonna go with fast. For render distance, we're gonna go with 12. For simulation distance, we're gonna turn that all the way down to five. Smooth lighting, we can leave on, but we're gonna turn it down quite a bit, somewhere around 20% or something like that. The reason being is this is very graphic intensive and turning off smooth lighting can actually help performance later on if you do have issues. For frame rate, we're gonna turn this to un limited. If we're going to turn the entity shadows off. As for brightness, attack indicator, and GUI scale, that's all personal preference. For dynamic lights, we're going to turn those off. Dynamic FOV is personal preference, but I'm going to turn it off. And you want to make sure that shaders are turned off off. Now, here's the deal. I know that people really, really want shaders. So because of that, we have a link in the description down below that's specifically designed to show you high performance shaders. So shaders that don't have a ton of lag and added into Minecraft. Now, you can install shaders with this setup, and if you've got a good PC, you won't have any issues, specifically a good GPU. But if you are on an older GPU, like I was for a very long time, that link in the description, those high FPS shaders, will allow you to get shaders even with some worse hardware than the top of the line 4090, for example. Nevertheless, we've turned shaders off here. We can go ahead and click done there. And then we want to move over to quality. In the quality tab, we want mipmap levels to be turned off. Mipmap type, which is going to be the setting next here, is going to be set to nearest. Anthroscopic filtering is off. Anti-aliasing is off. Emissive textures, we're going to turn that off. Random entities is actually going to be left on here because that's going to be coming from your texture pack. Better grass, we can turn to fast. Better snow, we can turn on. Custom fonts, we can leave on. That's also going to be coming from your texture pack, as well as custom colors. Connected textures, we're going to go ahead and turn that to the fast setting here. One second, if we can click through these. As for natural textures, it's actually personal preference. And if we hover over this, you can kind of read what this means. Basically, the grid-like pattern that will come around blocks. Do you want that or not? I kind of don't, so we'll turn that on. Custom Sky will turn that on, Custom Items will turn that on, Custom Entity Models will turn that on, and Custom GUIs will turn that on. As you can see, this is supplied, all of this custom stuff, by your resource pack. So it's important that if you want the most out of your resource pack, turn these on, right? Because otherwise, you won't have a lot of the stuff that your resource pack adds in. But if you do get in-game with a resource pack and there's lag, maybe an uninstall the resource pack or come turn some of this custom stuff on off. As far as distortion effects, we're going to turn that off because I don't like distortion, but it's up to your personal preference and the same goes for FOV. Whatever you want with these two settings is up to you. On the detail tab, we want to go ahead and start off with clouds, turning those to fast. 
Cloud height is your preference. I kind of like the clouds somewhere in the middle usually, but we'll, we'll go lower for this one. Why not? 25%. Trees, we want to set these to smart. Rain and snow, we want to turn to fast. Sky, you leave on. Stars, you leave on. Sun and moon, you leave on. Because what is Minecraft without these three things? And then we also want to show capes. Be it that's up to you, though. It's not really a performance issue. Uh, I want capes, but if you don't, that's fine as well. For fog, we can turn that off. Fog start doesn't matter because we just turned the fog off. View bobbing and held item tooltips are personal preference, as is the autosave indicator. Swamp colors, we're going to go ahead and leave that on. And vignette, we want to turn that to fast. Alternative blocks, we're going to leave on. But again, this is selected by your resource pack, so keep that in mind. And if you are having lag with a resource pack, this could be something to look at. For entity distance, we're going to turn that down to 50%. And biome blend, unfortunately, we're going to turn off because Biome Blink can actually be pretty resource intensive. Go ahead and click done there and then we want to move on to the performance tab where we can really start to rock and roll if you will as to some of the performance settings. So what we want to do is go ahead and turn on render regions, turn on fast math, turn on smart animations, turn on on fast math, I'm sorry, fast render wants to be turned on. Fast math also needs to be turned on. Smooth FPS needs to be turned on. I'm going to leave it set to off though, because what this is going to do is actually lower your FPS highs, if you will, but smooth them out. So generally, I would recommend turning both smooth FPS and smooth world on. You're going to get less FPS, but that's okay because it'll make things smoother, right? It'll still be a smooth experience, but I want to see how many we can get with this. So I'm going to leave these off. Chunk updates, we want to set that to one. Dynamic updates, we want to turn that on. Lazy chunk loading wants to be turned on and chunk builder needs to be set to semi blocking. So there you go. Those are your performance settings. This is where Optifine can really make a huge performance difference, even outside of its other settings. So these are extremely important. Go ahead and click done there. For animations, I recommend just turning them all off. I'm not a big animation fan, but if there are some specific animations you want to turn on, you can go in here and do that, right? You can turn on specific animations. But for me, I just want everything off. And then last but not least, in the other tab, I want to turn on show FPS because it makes it easier for this video, but it's also cool to know when your FPS is. Turn weather on, time, and pretty much everything else on this page. Auto save tooltips, full screen, screenshot size, show GL, GL errors, telemetry, all of that is up to you. When I missed, auto save. Because if you're getting lag every time Minecraft saves, let's say in this case it would be every six minutes, you could up this. You could up this to 12 or even 24 minutes. Just keep in mind, this is the maximum amount of time that you might lose in your world when you're playing. So if you're okay with losing 24 minutes of stuff in Minecraft, go ahead and turn it up to that. For me, six minutes is probably my sweet spot. Click done, and we're now done with the best Optifine settings. We can then navigate back here to the main menu, and we'll go ahead and join a simple game hosting server here in order to test this out. Now, I'm currently running a very old CPU. Let me just go ahead and show you here. If we go ahead and hit F3 on our keyboard, you can actually see computer hardware on the right-hand side. I'm running an Intel i7-4790K. That doesn't mean much to people, but it's paired with a 3090Ti. Basically, um, I'm in between processors right now. New one should arrive soon, but that means that I don't have the best hardware, but yet I'm still able to get 280, 290 FPS. With, I think this is the average as well of 100 FPS. If I was on my other system, this would be running at well over 1000 FPS, so keep that in mind. I'm curious what your FPS is after everything is set up. Keep in mind, though, if you did turn on Smooth World and Smooth FPS, it will be a little lower than what it could be because it's smoothing things out in the name of creating a better gameplay experience. So nevertheless, if you have any questions, let us know in the comment section down below and be sure to give a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.